And um, the last talk uh, during this session uh, will be given by Stefano Bazzacco from the University of Verona in Italy. And it is about the Mambrino project and its experience with transcribers. And uh, Stefano will be talking about objectives, workflow, deliverables, and future insights regarding this project. The floor is yours. Thank you, Andy. And well, many thanks to the organizing and scientific committee to having me here. And in the following minutes, I will talk briefly uh, about the experience that we had, uh, that we had uh, with the Mambrino project using transcribers. And in some way, I will insist in the way uh, in which I, we engaged scholars uh, to use transcribers for their own research projects. Uh, in some way, I'm talking mainly about the Southwestern Europe uh, communities, so Italian and Spanish communities that are facing now the uh, usage of transcribers. Uh, and uh, in some way, I will talk about some reluctancy that I experimented with the philologists in the usage of that tool. So, uh, well, that's the presentation structure. So uh, at the beginning, I will talk briefly about the Mambrino project, some objective and aims that we uh, put for our project and the achievements and results that we get. Then I will center on the uh, automated transcription of Italian and Spanish historical printed documents. Uh, and in that way, uh, also enter the uh, core concept of the of the entire session. So how transcribers can meet academia. So I will talk briefly about our linkage uh, uh, to transcribers. Uh, the well, uh, what we have done in, in the terms of dissemination as to say how we engage uh, research groups, uh, and how we managed to realize some workshop of uh, transcription uh, with other scholars. Uh, and then the deliverables that we got by those uh, workshops and the, by our work, and then future insights of uh, the whole projects. So let's talk uh, at the beginning, uh, let's start with the presentation of the project Mambrino. Uh, it is a project that started in 2008, uh, is directed by Anna Bognola and Stefano Neri, as you uh, can see. And the members of the team, well, the staff is composed by different scholars, uh, mainly philologists, but also the age specialists. Uh, and also the partner institutions are varied, as to say, we have contacts with libraries, uh, with DH centers, and also with uh, clearly um, scholars and research groups. So, well, uh, which are our objectives? Well, the Mambrino project deals with Spanish and Italian chivalric fiction, uh, the so-called Libros de Caballerías uh, in Spanish, uh, so books of chivalry. Uh, they spread among Europe uh, in printed edition. And uh, well, uh, they are interesting because even if they have been excluded from the canon, uh, in some way they tell something about the experimental moment of the novel in the modern time, so the modern period. So uh, they are uh, really, uh, uh, well, not studied, but really interesting in the definition of a novel uh, during that period. Um, our objectives started with the census of preserved copies of uh, Italian romances of chivalry, which are, uh, well, books derived um, by translation or original spin-offs uh, from the Spanish books. Um, so then we start uh, some digitization programs uh, within European and well worldwide libraries. Uh, and then I will talk a little bit about the creation of a digital library of Italian romances of chivalry, uh, which is under production and we, uh, we can get to that, uh, I guess, in June of 2023 with the publication of the digital library. So our object of study, as you, as you, as you can see, uh, is composed by a lot of books. Uh, we are talking about more than 50 books uh, among translation and spin-offs uh, that derived from Spanish, uh, Spanish books, uh, but also original uh, spin-offs or adaptations of those books uh, in Italian. So, well, uh, our object of study is very vast. And, uh, uh, well, um, we are 
centering by now in the two main cycles, the Amadis cycle and the Palmarine cycle, which are the most famous uh, in Spain. So, well, uh, our scientific research um, produced uh, more than 50 scientific articles on that matter. Uh, we are also maintaining a journal publication, an annual journal publication called Historias Finquidas, and uh, we published two repertories, uh, one based on the Amadis of Gold cycle and one of the Palmerino cycle, uh, which recounts uh, uh, the contents of those books uh, with summaries, with uh, name indexes, uh, and also a bibliographic description of, uh, of the World Corpus. Um, but added to that, uh, we realized uh, with uh, other institutions, a book census uh, of the edition preserved in libraries and archives. So uh, we counted among uh, 358 editions, uh, which number now has increased and in reaches something like 400 copies, uh, or 400 editions, sorry. Uh, and we registered a lot of copies of that edition. So uh, we are talking about uh, literature that spread among Europe and other countries also in America uh, during Renaissance period. Um, well, uh, starting from the census, we also thought uh, about uh, launching some digitization programs. So um, at the beginning, we experimented it with local libraries, uh, like the Civic Library of Verona, uh, and that collaboration produced, as you can see, a box of DVDs that in 2010 was something like a, a good technical solution, but now seems the best. And then starting from 2018, 2019, we established also some collaboration with, for example, the Biblioteca Nacional de España, other Spanish libraries, and also the Marchana Library of Venice. And we're hoping to establish furthermore digitization programs. In that way, uh, for example, with the Biblioteca Nacional de España and the Marchana Library, uh, we didn't take the digitalization by our own, but we suggested to them uh, to rediscover that, uh, that literature, those books. So in some way, uh, we are enhancing the knowledge of the, of the whole corpus that we are studying. And, um, well, the final result will be the publication of a Mambrino Project digital library. Uh, as you can see, it is based on a, a, a um, day publisher visualization, and uh, we integrated in a synoptic view uh, all the what we have studied and all what we have done during those years. So, uh, on the left, you will you can see the triple IF image that is uh, that can be zoomed uh, inside the visualizer, and then in the central part of the uh, of the day publisher uh, visualizer, you can see the transcription, uh, the edited transcription. So we started using transcribers for that, and then corrected the resulting transcriptions. And then on the right side, uh, you can see the, well, the uh, summary of uh, chapter by chapter of each book uh, with named entities inside it. And we also have to add some motif index uh, analysis to, to that part of the, uh, of the edition. So, well, that uh, has to be the final result, but uh, we started with automated transcription of uh, Italian historical printed documents. So uh, our workflow involved the digitization, the first step, and then follow with the transcription, the automatic transcription, uh, surely. And uh, uh, then we started to model uh, in XML DI our transcriptions and publish them. So, well, uh, we faced little problems in the uh, transcription of those books because of the characteristics of the corpus. Uh, we are talking about printed books, mainly published in Venice between uh, 1530, 1580. Uh, the script that we dealt with was italics, uh, derived from Manuzio's italics. So we had special characters and ligatures and abbreviation also inside the text. Uh, and we had to face two other problems. The format, they are in octavo, so they are pocketbooks. And uh, it implies that uh, uh, 
most of all, they uh, we can uh, have books in bad conditions, as to say, they were read in places uh, in the church stairs. So people use that to read it loud uh, to an audience. So uh, they are in bad condition. They had stains. They are broken in some way. So we had to face also those problems and the extension of those books, as to say, uh, manual transcription was not viable. They were something like uh, a thousand pages for each book. So it was a problem for us. Then we started using transcribers. And as you can see, the results were was very uh, fascinating for us. Uh, from the beginning with italics, uh, we experimented something like less than uh, 100, uh, 1% of uh, character error rate for each book. Uh, when you can, when you see that the, uh, the index goes up to the 1% is because the digitalization were very, very bad. As to say, they were something like the Google Books digitalization in black and white and without aumenting the contrast. So in some way, uh, it was for printed books, uh, transcripts worked very well. And those initial results, uh, bring us also to experiment with the Spanish Gothic script. Uh, and as you can see, um, the results are quite similar, even if the Gothic script it, uh, in some cases is more tough to recognize. And also with round script, the uh, Romana script uh, uh, in Spanish language. So, well, uh, in some way alimented by those results, uh, we started to uh, improve our relation with Red Coop and Transcribus, uh, and also, well, uh, we started to uh, imagine uh, in what way it could be, uh, it, um, scholars could be engaged in, in the usage of Transcribus. So, uh, we faced a little problem at the beginning because uh, from the text recognition results and softwares that were produced in the 90s, uh, those software and those bad results uh, produced something like a bias uh, in humanist community uh, towards the OCR and HDR softwares. Uh, the prejudices were of different nature, but uh, they told us that uh, those software was not sufficiently reliable. Um, so uh, it sharpened the distinction between clear manual transcription and uh, the OCR. Uh, and also the thing that OCR and HDR softwares uh, at the very beginning uh, uh, required a high level of expertise. So we wanted to amend this wrong perception because the, our experience with transcribers was completely different. So, well, we started in, sorry, there's an error in 2018, uh, stating a memorandum of understanding with Günther Mulberger when he, come, he came to, to Verona. And then, uh, well, in September 2020, uh, I became a transcribus trainer, a transcribus ambassador. Um, so during those uh, recent years, something from 2018, I gave something like 17 workshops, three more are coming in this year, uh, 15 seminar presentations, and three consultancies. Uh, and the very good thing is that uh, uh, I was called to collaborate with four and more <laughs> international projects. So, uh, well, those lead me the possibility also to um, publish some uh, public extended models uh, referred to the uh, scripts that uh, we dealt with. Well, uh, how works the dissemination and the engaging of scholars? Uh, well, in two ways, mainly. Uh, on the one end, uh, I started to present uh, my research on transcribers, the result that I um, obtained uh, in seminar and different congresses. Uh, in that way, uh, talking about transcribers in seminar and different congresses uh, not only increased the scholar knowledge on automated transcription and the usage of HDR, uh, but also uh, well worked well uh, for mm, well solving or uh, assuring uh, people about the uh, technical biases that they had. That is quite often uh, a, a matter of fact for humanist studies. Um, then uh, I suggested future improvements. Uh, so 
uh, mainly uh, going deep inside any specific results of the audience that I uh, either to face and well enhance collaboration. Uh, so people that listen to those presentation in some way asked me something and we establish a cooperation between research groups. On the other hand, uh, well, workshops were the best thing to engage scholar and researchers because they could see uh, concretely the results that I obtained. Uh, by workshops, uh, in some way, I, I wanted to get scholars more familiar with Transcribers Pipeline, uh, but also I organized some transcribatons, uh, well, some crowdsourcing mediated crowdsourcing projects with, because involved uh, specialists and, uh, well, well-formed scholars and show also some related technologies as you can see the scan tent for example well starting from that uh, i propose to you but i'm in the willing of listen to other fruitful collaborative models uh, and i describe two of them uh, our research workflow workflow model uh, that is the one that begins with the, the giving of seminars and little presentations uh, well, at the beginning, I organized that seminar uh, to teach uh, people how to use Transcribus and how it can be applied to their research. And then uh, the people that participated to the course that were uh, scholar specialists, uh, participated after five months uh, in, a, in a huge Congress that we had in Verona. Uh, and all of them worked during those fifth months, uh, well, coordinated by me, uh, to um, some projects, and they presented during that, uh, that Congress uh, some results on, for example, the limits of layout analysis, how they transcribe and uh, how to choose uh, better um, editorial models, and then also something uh, about post-production of the results we obtain. And it's a fruitful research because uh, the, well, the, the proceedings of that uh, uh, of that congress uh, were published uh, in our uh, specific journal called historia sphingidas uh, in the first special number which were published in june of 2022 uh, called humanidades digitales y estudios literarios hispanicos which i edited with uh, with the help of other of other collaborators um, another workflow model that i can uh, discuss is the uh, way in which I engage scholars giving a workshop, for example, that one uh, in the, well, by Zoom uh, to the University of Mexico, the UNAM, the National University of Mexico. Um, and well, in that case, I gave something like 20 hours of theoretical and practical presentation of transcribers. We transcribed a manuscript in that case, a book of chivalry, which has never been transcribed uh, yet. And we, at the end, uh, well, students and uh, PhD scholars participated to that, uh, uh, to that special uh, training moment. They transcribed a um, lot of pages uh, uh, by their own. They worked by their own inside transcribers. So at the end, uh, I got them engaged more uh, with the publication of uh, uh, a model uh, for, for that specific manuscript. Uh, so, in some way, uh, the publication is a reward for people that participated to the course and produced their own transcription. So, uh, well, uh, it's, it works really well, and I guess that uh, in other cases I will go further with that. So, just to go uh, much speedy, yeah, uh, the deliverables that I produced during uh, those years, well, uh, I'm, I produced uh, two uh, extended Spanish, uh, uh, extended model for Spanish uh, 15th and 17th century uh, scripts. Uh, the Gothic scripts on the one hand, as you can see, we participated, well, there are a lot of authors that participated to it. Um, the model can be seen in the Transcribus website in, uh, as a public model with a brief description, then in my GitHub page with a more detailed description, and then the data set is saved uh, in Zenodo with restricted, uh, uh, restricted access. So uh, people can ask for that and we can uh, manage it also for engage and uh, 
collaborate with other partners. Then, well, the Spanish Redonda round script uh, belonged to the 16th, 17th century. As you can see, uh, in the same case, we produced a public model. Uh, the CER is very low as they are printed books, but uh, uh, also that, uh, uh, that model involved the little texts uh, that uh, are some, something like the pre gazettes of, uh, uh, of Spanish culture. So uh, they were something like of four pages, five, five pages, six pages, not, not so much data, but uh, a suitable data to interpret other, other kinds of material because they were very damaged in some way digitized in bad condition. So uh, it works really well for those scripts. Uh, it only misses some uh, drop caps uh, or some dashes at the end of the line. So uh, it's really uh, it's really working well. And also the data set in the node, as, uh, as I told you. Then we are producing the italics uh, model for uh, the books printed in Venice uh, between, well, mainly in the 16th, 17th century. And uh, for that, we involved the different uh, partners, as you can see, the University of Verona, of Padua, and of Rome, La Sapienza, and we are working together uh, to, well, to, to produce that model and to publish it. And also a two columns P2 Pala model with uh, adding and the, the two columns detection. So it worked really well for our books that uh, in Spain were printed in folio in two different columns. So uh, we had to solve that problems because unless humanists will not uh, <laughs> agree with the usage of transcribe, we'll see if we didn't solve that, uh, that matter. So um, let's go on with, uh, and to conclude with future, future insights. So uh, our extended model will be implemented and are going to be implemented each six months or each year uh, in our hoping. So uh, uh, the model updating works like that. I um, get involved some new transcribers and new scholars that want to transcribe, uh, include new projects and institutions and by their work, I will uh, update those models uh, constantly. Then uh, I also want to combine those extended model at the end so uh, multi-font documents can be transcribed as well. And I was, want also to increase scholars' interaction by uh, setting a cross-cutting research field for them, but also to coordinate some crowdsourcing group uh, and, well, set the guidelines for simplify the transcription workflow. Um, then uh, what I'm aiming to do is to correct it in a semi-automated or automated way uh, our transcripts or the transcript derived from our models. So uh, we can we, we are um, involved in the uh, transformation by uh, batch transformation uh, with some software, for example, Python, but also systematic correction of word expression. For example, in this image, you can see um, uh, uh, well, the usage of a software by Jose Manuel Fradejas, uh, which is a partner of us that uh, is experimenting with an NLP tool uh, and they integrating historical dictionaries just to correct or having an insight of which words can be uh, wrong in the transcription. In the transcription. And then, uh, well, the idea is to uh, develop a sustainable and open access, access publishing pipeline. So we start with the digitalization, uh, then, well, maybe we have to uh, move them, as to say, uh, we can transcribe them with an, uh, uh, with transcribers and then go on with automatic collation. Uh, then we can model them uh, and, well, uh, use some TI models, TI, editorial models, uh, for example, diplomatic and normalized or others, uh, to, well, make for scholars much simpler the usage of, uh, of the resulting transcription, then customize visualization in type publisher, and then integrating uh, linked open data to, uh, to the final edition, to the final result. So, well, uh, that's our last goal uh, to well create something like a working space for that. Uh, we are uh, working on the uh, creation of a mm, project that we call Typecase Project, uh, 
referring not to the boxes in which uh, types were put during during those uh, the Renaissance period. And so we uh, are centered mainly in the text recognition of printed documents of the modern age. And the objective is that these sites uh, work something like a, an environment for interaction between scholars, uh, but also a blog just to uh, present a new release of data sets of new models of new Pitopala models. Uh, and also inf some information about future events and workshops. So I guess that in June 2023, we will be able to, uh, well, to publish this, uh, this site and also our uh, final digital library project. So uh, that's all for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your talk, Stefano. Yeah, very interesting. You can see it's not just about handwriting, um, but also prints, um, especially prints that are difficult to read for um, uh, classic OCR. So this is one of the areas where Transcribus is, comes in very handy too. So are there any questions? Thank you for your talk. Very, very, very interesting. Um, you know, for the script of the, your rotonda, it's very similar to some script printed in French at the same time. So I was wondering if we can merge our model in French to your it Italian or uh, Spanish, because I realized that it was the same S, the same uh, way, just the, the, what you showed. Yeah. So maybe, you know, to merge the fonts, Together? Yeah, in Europe, I guess that uh, there are much of similar fonts during that period. But uh, well, I guess that you are right. As to say, uh, I was wondering at the beginning if uh, separating for each language and maybe for each printer uh, the models and create a specific model for each printers was the best solution. But I came into the uh, the possibility to well uh, create extended models and extended models reach much more uh, confidence and reliable results than uh, than using separate and individual models by my experience so in some way yes i guess that when the model is well well refined now i'm publishing the version two of the of the other uh, of the two models uh, for gothic script and round script so well yeah we can merge them uh, Quickly, I guess, no. <laughs> yeah. You know, it can serve also us in French or as in Italian or Romanian. Yeah, but I guess that it works. Well, I was afraid, quite afraid uh, by the language, uh, uh, the language matter, as to say, uh, at the beginning, I thought that uh, uh, a model for Italian scripts uh, was, uh, works better with Italian. Uh, printed copies, maybe yes, but well, uh, extended model revealed to be the solution for most of scholars. So yeah, thank you for your suggestion. We will yes, I think this is especially the case with printed material because you can create large amounts of very good ground truth very quickly there because the, the CR that you start with is already very low. So you can correct a lot of material quite quickly. And uh, the language model is quite robust when it comes to mixing various languages. So for the language model, it's just like one bigger language, so to, so to speak. Yeah, and so, another thing, I guess, that the drop caps or litera nobili, or as we call no, uh, spread along all the whole Europe. So in some cases, maybe some French script has that really, that type that we need to be recognized inside Spanish text, that's the thing because type circulated along Europe. So. so one more question. Yeah, and, and these data might serve also for people who wants to uh, reconstruct uh, circulation of, of uh, Sorry, I think it's just not loud working. enough. Excuse me up a little bit. I think it was just not loud enough. OK, um, so the, 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 the kind of data that you're producing can also serve to uh, Look at the circulation of the uh, the cas in Europe. Uh, eventually, yeah, but, uh, in that case, I guess that uh, well, the real representation of those those drop gaps uh, can be made explored with different.
different uh, solution inside transcribers, I was thinking about, uh, to me, the keyword spotting function by now seems something like that is unusable, but could reveal something like that. As to say, the representation of capital letters, if could be exported in some way by the keyword spotting function, then we can we can see different representation inside the whole book so in, a, in, a, in a moment. So, uh, yeah, I guess that also it, it will can improve you know, the knowledge of those. Well, also to know that the movement of, the, of those material is quite tough, as to say, uh, some, I don't know, some Spanish printer goes to, uh, I don't know, Fl uh, Fjandre, or Fl Flanders. Flanders. So maybe they, well, they combine or mix it with others, and it's quite tough. But I guess that we can use it for, for uh, yeah. Computer scientists will do it. Yeah, we have to start from something, I guess. So. Okay, so I think we need to wrap up and uh, yeah, get the, the lunch break started. And see you all again soon. Thanks for attending this panel, and see you later. <laughs>